Yeah. My next act. Yeah. <laughs> no, we're um. All right, now we're settled. Whew. I'm gonna pray, man. That was traumatic for all of us. <laughs> Get your ribbon. Have mercy on us. All right. Here's my prayer. Um, we're looking at the fruit of the spirit, and uh, here I'm just gonna read the passage for you. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience. Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. What a great series as we were sitting in staff meeting. And then I reached this week and I'm like, I'm preaching on kindness. I don't even know what kindness is. What is kindness? Like, and you want me to talk about it for 20 minutes? Be nice. Done. No, but there's got to be more to it than that. And so... Um, so, yeah, this is sort of the inside look at the trauma of our week. Um, okay, well, what is kindness? Well, I went to the dictionary. Let me share with you what the dictionary says. Kindness is a state of being that includes the attributes of loving affection, sympathy, friendliness, patience, pleasantness, gentleness, and goodness. Kindness is a quality shown in the way a person speaks and acts. All right. But... I realized after I read that and processed that, that's not really how we know what kindness is, is it? We don't get it just stuck in our head like, oh, this is kindness and I gotta find the definition and try and do that. We experience it. And that's how we know what kindness is. You have experienced kindness and as a result, you're able to give it out. And so I wanted to ask you to help me round out this definition of kindness by what's a kindness that you might have received or if you're willing to be a little daring, given this week or in the last two weeks or so. One sentence or two. We don't need a whole story, though. What's a kindness you've received? Oh. Be able to both listen and express a wanting to hear someone's story. Yeah. Regardless of who they are. Yeah. Absolutely. Listening to somebody's story, for sure. I always feel a sense of kindness from a person who lets me merge in, in <laughs> sure. very busy traffic. Uh -huh. now, maybe that's just common courtesy, but perhaps courtesy is part of kindness. And yeah, that's... Just, I feel like, you know, there's a person who wanted to help me with something. All right. There's a reason people wave to each other after that happens. Yeah, yeah. kindness. <laughs> One finger or whole hand, different, but yes, <laughs> different waves there. I took somebody on a wrong turn while I was being a cabbie, and they were really, really nice about it and said, you know what, I was going to get to the airport early anyway, it's all good. So that's just a little kindness. Now, none of these things are huge. I'm going to brag a little bit. Susie, can I brag? Is it okay? Yes. So uh, last week we had the water challenge. We gave out water bottles to people and said, give them to somebody because it's going to be a hot week. Uh, we lost the hot week part yeah. this weekend. <laughs> but, um, it was blazing hot this week. And Susie pulled up and there was somebody there with a sign and she gave the person a, a dollar and the water bottle and the person said, man, so hot. I really, really appreciate the water. Now here's the beauty of the kindness of Susie. When Susie saw that that water was very much appreciated. She grabbed the other water bottle and handed it to him too. <laughs> it's a kindness, one step further in the direction. I grew up in a house where kindness, uh, it was talked about a lot. It was kind of in the fabric of who we were. Um, my mom was a nurse and I grew up hearing regularly about the difference between doctors and nurses, according to her. Now um, there's a slight rivalry there. But my mom's perspective was that doctors had great, great knowledge and they use that knowledge to pretty uncompassionately cure somebody of their illness. Whereas it was the nurse who administered that cure, but did so with great care and comfort. Who was it who brought in the extra pillow when that person was uncomfortable? Who was it who sat by their bedside and actually listened to how they were feeling about things? I went and visited my brother, who's a nurse uh, up in Everett, and it was hard to, to catch him. He's kind of a nurse who's running around doing lots of things, and while I was there, he was talking to the chaplain, wondering if he could get a portable stereo that would play a CD, because he had a patient who loved classic rock and wanted to listen to it when he woke up in the morning, and my brother had made a mixtape for him of all the best classic rock guitar solos that he could think of. What does classic rock have to do with medicine? 
very little, but it has everything to do with kindness. And the beauty of kindness is that anybody and everybody can do it because it's little things that go one step further. It's not just doing what you have to, but what you could do for somebody. So is it just being nice? No, it's something much bigger. I heard it described uh, once as love's uh, mellow, generous side. Love can be hard. It can set down a boundary. It can, uh, it can be firm. But love's mellow, gentle, generous side is kindness. Spurgeon, a great preacher, uh, described kindness as seeds that are scattered through little acts that create springtime wherever they land. I love that image. Just little life-giving bursts that pop up in people's days. In scripture, it's always linked with love. Um, 1 Corinthians 13, I've gone to a number of weddings, heard this passage way too many times this summer, but love is patient, love is kind. Hmm, it's right there. Love, described in action, is kindness. King James actually took it so far as to describe grace, that love that goes out from God that invites us in, comforts us, and heals us as loving kindness. That's the word for it. It's a fruit of the Spirit. It's something that God puts in us, and it's made to get out of us. That's kindness. But we get to know kindness much better as a Christian than outside of it because of Jesus. Jesus was incredibly kind. He talked a lot about kindness, actually. Uh, the Good Samaritan. You know that story? There's a guy who's beat up. He's on the side of the road. And uh, a guy walks up and goes, man, I don't want to get my hands dirty with that. I I'm way too busy. I another one passes by. The guys who should have helped didn't really help. And then another guy walks up. An enemy from a different nation walks up and sees him and says, you know what? That guy needs help. Compassion. And he puts him on his donkey, takes him to the inn, and says, do whatever you need to do. I'll pay the cost. It's kindness. Or uh, one could describe kindness as going the extra mile for someone. You know where that phrase came from, going the extra mile? Jesus said something about it. He actually said, if somebody comes along and tells you, go with me one mile, go with him two instead. And what Jesus is talking about is in his culture, the Roman soldiers who were occupying Israel could come along and go, you know what, you, I'm tired of carrying my pack. You're walking with me for a mile. That was illegal. So Baron would grab my pack and walk a mile with a 50-pound pack. And can you imagine the stunned face of that soldier when we got to the end of that mile and Baron turns to me and says, hey, you know what? Let me walk with you another mile. Here, I'll just, I'll just keep carrying your pack. Just taking an extra step, figuring out what you could do for somebody instead of what you have to do. It's a beautiful thing. But Jesus didn't just talk about kindness because talking about love, talking about kindness, doesn't actually make anything happen. It's doing it. Let me give you some examples of what Jesus' kindness looks like. I'm going to read for you John chapter 2, Jesus' first miracle. On the third day, there was a wedding taking place in Cana in Galilee. And Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to this wedding. And when the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, they have no more wine. Very embarrassing. Ran out of wine at the reception. The party's still going. And Jesus said to her, woman, why do you involve me? My hour has not yet come. And his mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you to do. Nearby stood six stone jars, the kind used by Jews for ceremonial washing, and each held 20 to 30 gallons. And Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water so they were filled to the brim. And then he told them, now take some of that and bring it to the master of the banquet. And they did so, and the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. He didn't realize where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. And then he called the bridegroom aside and said, everyone brings out the choice wine first and the cheap wine after everybody's had too much to drink. But you've saved the best till now. Jesus' first miracle, it was a secret. Only the servants, a couple friends, and Jesus' mom knew that it even happened. And what did it accomplish? What was this great need that Jesus met through this great miracle? We get so caught up in the fact that he made 180 gallons of wine. We forget, what did he do? 
He saved a groom from being embarrassed on his wedding day. That's it. He kept a party going that was about to end in disgrace. Sometimes when we step up and we speak up for someone, when we give somebody recognition when they're having a hard day, when we encourage somebody when they're not doing very well, we do the same thing. Lift their spirits a little bit. Let me share another one. Luke 5, 12 and 13 says this. While Jesus was in the towns, a man came along who was covered with leprosy. And when he saw Jesus, he fell to his face on the ground and he begged him, Lord, if you're willing, you can make me clean. And Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. And immediately the leprosy left him. Why did he touch him? Especially before he cleaned him. There's an order there. Jesus actually reached out and touched this guy who was covered in leprosy. He touched him because he hadn't been touched in a very, very long time by anybody. When you have leprosy in that culture, it was contagious. Everybody knew it. And so this guy would be told to walk around the town and say, unclean everywhere that he went, yell it out. And people would scatter before him. No one would touch this guy. And this covered a great deal of him. He'd had this disease a while. Jesus had healed people with a word. He healed people from long distances. He said, you know what, that guy that you're worried about back at home, he's healed. Jesus didn't need to touch him. He touched him because he cared about him. And I wonder sometimes if that guy, did it mean more to him that he was healed of his leprosy or the fact that Jesus reached out and touched him? Get caught up in the miracle of the fact that he cured an incurable disease at the time. Sometimes we miss the fact that Jesus was kind and he touched him. A woman who'd been bleeding for years and years touches the hem of Jesus' clothing and is immediately healed. I don't know if Jesus chose to heal her or if Jesus is just so good and powerful that being that close to him healed her. But either way, the first thing Jesus says is, is bring her to me. She probably came quaking, wondering what he was going to say. She wasn't supposed to be touching anybody. And what's he say to her? Daughter, daughter, your faith has healed you. He calls her a daughter. He welcomes her into the family. I don't know if you've noticed this. I like to call people brother and sister a lot. And I don't just do it uh, because I, I, for any other reason except for the fact that it shows that I'm family with you. Jesus said, these are my brothers and sisters. You're my brothers and sisters, and so I'm going to call you that. But it's a meaning of affection. It's a way of doing kindness for me. So... I could go on and on and on. Jesus did lots of stories of kindness. That's where we get the picture of kindness. But here's what I learned from Jesus. It's an action. It's not a feeling. Think of someone that you would think of as kind. That you can think of. Now, if you had to convince me that they were kind, what would you tell me? Would you tell me things that they had written down in their journal about how they felt about people? Or would you tell me things that they had done for you? got to be put into action. It's not a feeling. I can't say, man, I feel so kind today. And then not do anything with it. Or else, what's the point? Cal Thomas wrote, love talked about is easily ignored. Love demonstrated is irresistible. Same is true of kindness. A person is kind not because they have some inclination towards caring for somebody else. They're kind because they actually act on it on a regular basis. So there's good news and bad news in this. Good news first. The good news is you have a will. I have a will. We've been given will by God. So whether you feel like it or not, you can choose to be kind to somebody. It's a beautiful thing. God gave us the ability to just do, whether we feel like it or not. I think it's a wonderful, wonderful gift. And we get to make that decision over and over and over and over and over again. And God's grace is there for when we don't do it. But then we get the next opportunity. We pull up at the gas station and there's somebody there. We can either greet them with a smile or not. Kindness. Now, the tricky part, and this is the bad news, is if we keep the kindness in, this is the fruit, right? Fruit of the Spirit. What happens if you keep fruit on the tree for too long or if you don't ever eat it and it just sits in your house? Rots. It's nasty. 
starts to put off a stench. Kindness unextended becomes, in my mind, selfishness, rudeness. It withers. Um, the Dead Sea in Israel, right? Been there once. It was pretty cool. Uh, there's nothing alive in it. That's why it's called the Dead Sea. But the reason it's the Dead Sea is because it's the lowest point on the earth. So things flow into it. Well, they did until a while before when some conflict. But stuff flows into it, so minerals are building up and all that. Nothing's flowing out of it because water doesn't really flow uphill. And so it just gets deader and debtor. If we are taking in God's kindness, if we're receiving kindnesses from other people, but they never filter out of us as well, somehow it becomes toxic. And instead of being springtime scattered through kind actions throughout the world, they become dead. Dead in us. Dead for others. So we get to choose. Are we going to let it flow out of us? Or are we just going to take it in? But why choose kindness? It doesn't come natural. That's not the way the world works. I don't know if you've experienced this, but for the most part, going through your day, you're not assaulted by way too many kindnesses that you can barely get anything done. For the most part, our life is getting things done, giving to somebody else what they deserve, what we owe them. Um, or for most of us, if I'm completely honest, and I, I experience many days like this, that uh, for the most part, we don't have time or energy to think about somebody else, because most of our time is thought spent thinking about ourselves. I think that's how life functions for most people. So why choose kindness? One, it's a way of responding to God's love. It's a way of responding to what God has given you. You know, we come here and we celebrate what Jesus has done for us. And we do so with a half an hour of singing and some good listening and then giving of some tithes and offerings. And that covers one hour out of our week, which has a lot of hours in it. I haven't done the math right now, but 160 or something like that. And what do we do with those other 160 hours to thank God for his love? Well, this is the beauty of Jesus saying, whatever you do for the least of these, you do for me. Everybody you come across is an opportunity for you to say, you know what? God, I love you too. Kindness. Second reason, Ephesians 4.32 says, Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as Christ forgave you. God says do it. Now, this is where I like to turn to the logic of Larry Stone, uh, the coach who kind of goes, I don't need Hebrew or Greek or whatever to understand that. Just be kind. Okay, said, let's do it. It's not complicated. Let's do it. Second thing, another thing is that it makes life better for others. Um, I have this story, it's stuck in my mind. I don't remember much uh, of the stuff that I learned in school, but I know in second grade I made a horrible mistake. It was March 17th, St. Patrick's Day, and I forgot to wear green. Recess came, merciless, <laughs> merciless. I had my entire class around me pinching away because that was the ritual. And my second grade teacher walked out onto the playground and took off her little pin that had a shamrock that she had worn with her outfit and put it on me. It was a little tiny kindness, but I remember it distinctly to this day. Unexpected things. When we extend kindness, we break the cruel monotony of a world and insert a little tiny dash of heaven into it. And what happens? Life springs up. I worked at Amazon uh, one Christmas season. That was the hardest physical job I think I've ever worked. So we were running around, getting things into boxes, and uh, they just ground you. You had to get lots done in every day, or you were just flat out fired. Uh, it was on a concrete floor. You spent half of the day in the fridge or the freezer, depending on what they needed, and the other half on the regular floor. And uh, it was brutal. And then one day, one staff member showed up and put donuts and oranges in the break room, just on a table. And it was amazing to watch. Everyone came in from break room from for the break, 
10 minutes to finally rest during their eight hours of sprinting around. And there was just a softness in the air. There was a lightness and all of a sudden people were excited. Just a little thing, one little kindness broke up the grind of that place. Life is hard. We get to pray about it regularly here. I mean, that's just the other stuff of like cancer and difficulties and, and people's stories that went sideways. And life is tough. And let alone, I see the mess that comes out of me. I'm quite capable of starting fights and getting in messy situations. And, and then you put a whole bunch of us sinners all together and we see what kind of mess we can make with each other. And life gets really messy and complicated and difficult and hard. It's kind of nice when kindness pops up and there's a little break. Take a deep breath. Relax. So how can we do it? How can we do it this week? What's the keys to getting to be more kind? I think step one is to just receive it. Think on it. Consider what God has done for you. Consider what other people have done for you. How have you received kindness? On Christmas Eve, Starbucks, 2013, somebody decided to buy the drink for the person behind them. And uh, 300 people later, there were still drinks being bought for people behind them. And they ended the day with $45 extra in the till because too many people had paid too much for too many drinks. And uh, so they started it the next day and they told the first customer, hey, your drink's already paid for by the last person from yesterday. 700 people later, after three days, they finally stopped this chain of generosity. Here's what I learned from that. One, one small kind act can create a ripple and it keeps moving forward. Second thing, it's easier to give a kindness when you realize you receive it. How many of those people who bought a drink for the person behind them would have done so had somebody not paid for their drink as well? Third thing, it's fun. That's really fun. Like, I don't even care how much the person behind me's drink is because I walked up and they told me I got a free drink. Now I'm willing to pay for that person's drink because this is way more fun than just paying the 275 or whatever highway robbery there is for my Americano. <laughs> Kindness is a beautiful life-giving thing. Step two, be prayerful about opportunities. It takes awareness. We all have a lot on our plate. I know you do. And I know that as you're going through your day, there are opportunities to be kind that pop up. But unless we can slow down and be aware, we're going to miss them. One of the things I love about Jesus is how interruptible he is. That story where the woman touched the hem of his cloak. He was actually walking with a guy whose daughter was dying. And yet he stopped and said, wait, there's a kindness here I need to do. Hold on. Third thing, do it. Nike, just do it. Kindness is little small acts. They can become our knee-jerk reaction, but we just gotta do them. We can't think too much about them. We can't spend time dwelling, do I be kind or not in this case? It's more of a thing of, uh, let's just do it. And the more we do it, the more we find we wanna do it. Okay, so I want to I wanna give you a quick invitation. I got some more cards because that's kind of one of the things I like to do. So I want you to take one of these. Here, I'm going to pass them around. And I want you to write on it. I want you to write on there the name of one person who you could be kind to this week and what you're going to do for them. And then I want you to put that like either in your car or maybe on your mirror. Put it somewhere where you'll remind it until you get done, and then you can crinkle it up and throw it away and feel better for your week. Um, and as you kind of consider that, I want to end with a quick story. So these construction workers, they're working on a project across the street from a hospital, and um, they see a little girl on the third floor holding up a sign. And the sign says, my name is Lisa, what's your name? <laughs> the construction workers, thought that was pretty cute. So they went out and bought some poster board and they got a Sharpie and they wrote their name on it and they, they held up signs the next day that said, my name's Bob, Joe, and whatever their names were. 
And uh, the next day, the little girl's out there with a sign again, and uh, it says, I'm seven years old, how old are you? <laughs> So they flip over their poster board and they write 42, 37, whatever their ages were, and hold that up and wave to her. And this went on for days and days. And then one day, no sign up in the third floor window. And the guys are a little bit bummed, so they decide to go over to the hospital and, and they get up to the nurse and she says, well, she took a turn for the worse, she's in the ICU. Well, they're moved, so they uh, pool a little bit of their money fire some flowers, send it up with a card, wish her the best. And a little while later, another sign pops up in that window. Lisa passed away. But thank you for caring. A little girl in a hospital. Who knows what difference it made that a couple construction workers took the time to write some Sharpies, give a little wave, do something nice, send a card. Kindness isn't hard, but it can mean so much. And all of us only have so much time in our life. We have so many moments. So. Can I add something? Yeah. Because my wife practiced kindness. Mm -hmm. Anybody that knew her, mm -hmm. it was something that she said was a choice that we made every day. And she was a prolific writer, and when she was putting together a nursing program once, right in the middle of the program, she wrote, everybody you meet has things they're dealing with that you have no idea they're dealing with it. So always be kind, always, that you were going to finish the, the nursing plan. Your wife was very wise. She, she was. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. She's right. It makes a huge difference. I think because the acts are small, sometimes we minimize the effect of them. But we're kingdom people. We're people that Jesus is working something out in us. And God put this in us, and we don't want it to rot, so let's do it. Let's be kind this week. Sound like a plan? All right, let me pray. God, you gave us Christ. He showed us what it means to be kind, and you gave us that kindness when we needed it as sinners, and, and he gave us life. And then he rose again, and he implanted it, this kindness in us. And the least that we can do is respond to it. So God, show us moments where we can be kind. Work out in us this inclination. Stop us in our tracks if we're about to move past a kindness that you've prepared for us. God, thanks for your love and your goodness. Help us to be kind people to a world that needs it. Amen. Amen.